Okay, I think I think we're going live. Is that my hand? I think that's my hand there. Well, good Saturday morning, everyone. And welcome to the floor of the dining room here. Yeah, as I plop, plop down on the floor here. Now I've got this set up here because I want to show something. And I'm shooting this off my telephone. And I sort of wanted to center this thing here. It's Saturday morning, Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, anyway, I've got this set up here just for the purpose of centering. And what I'm going to do today, we talked about uh, uh, the playing cards and, and reading tarot. Uh, using tarot or playing cards yesterday uh, and uh, I just wanted to do just a brief sort of light uh, uh, demonstration of how uh, uh, how I shuffle and choose the significator and uh, uh, in a tarot reading now this is something that I've developed over uh, uh, I know you can't see me. That's okay. I don't need to be seen. Uh, this is something that I've developed over the years. For many years, I use the, the Celtic cross uh, spread. And for uh, uh, a little while, I tried to use that very long, lengthy, multi-staged uh, process that... Uh, uh, the Golden Dawn developed and that, that Crowley expanded on. And, uh, but over the years, I sort of organically uh, uh, developed what I call Lawn's Roll with the Flow uh, tarot spread. And uh, if you are reading tarot cards, I'm sure you've got a, a favorite spread that you're using yourself. So I'm not going to... Uh, uh, try to influence you in any way as to what kind of a spread to uh, choose. Instead, I want to start even before the spread uh, with the shuffle and cut. Uh, you hold you hold a universe in your hands when you hold a deck of tarot cards, and. Uh, a brand new deck of tarot cards is usually uh, organized in such a way as to systematically uh, order the cards in perfect order. Now, perfect order would be, uh, in my opinion, would be 0 through 21 for the trumps, and then uh, the four aces, Wands, cups, swords, and discs, and then the the court cards and small cards of the uh, of the greater or the lesser arcana in wands, cups, swords, discs order. And you could you could say, well, uh, let's just do ace, uh, king, queen. Uh, prince, princess, or whatever, but it's the the ace is the major card of the trump or the suit, and then the court cards, and then within the court cards, uh, or at least three of the court cards of each suit, live the small cards. So in other words, when you buy a deck of tarot cards, it's like the universe actually is. The universe is already operating perfectly. No matter how it may appear to us, no matter how we may view our life or our situation or the world's uh, <laughs> catastrophic uh, situation, nevertheless, 
if we could actually see how things truly are, we'd see that the universe and our lives and life itself and being itself is operating perfectly just like that brand new deck of tarot cards. But it sure doesn't seem that way, does it? And usually when we have a, a question that we uh, would like an oracle for, uh, it's because we've got a, a, a major problem or a major issue that we need some, some uh, intuitive insight on. So, a perfectly ordered tarot deck shows the universe as it truly is if we had the eyes to see it. But we don't have the eyes to see it. We have unsatisfactory, incomplete, we've got damaged powers of perception at the moment. And the tarot reading is supposedly uh, capable of clearing that up a little bit. So what we want to do with the shuffle is take the perfectly ordered universe as it is and shuffle it in such a way as it represents our present damaged powers of perception. Before it's shuffled, it's the way the universe is. When it's shuffled, it's that same perfect universe, only we're observing it with our inadequate powers of perception. Does that make sense? So, before I even shuffle the, the cards, I bring divinity into the situation. Now, uh, most every tarot technique says you, you do an invocation to God or an invocation to the powers that, that, uh, that rule divination and such. I absolutely love the deity Ganesha. Okay, he fits right in with my Thelemic point of view and everything else. But I actually warm up and uh, am devotionally comfortable with the viewing the singularity, viewing the absolute consciousness in the form and personality of Ganesha. So I have, you know, but I don't, I feel weird. I'm not into classic prayer where I get down on my seat, oh, Ganesha, please do this. Now, I want Ganesha to dictate how these cards are shuffled. So what I do, what I do at first, before I even shuffle for the, the, the question, I chant Ganesha's, an, an entire rosary number, uh, 200, uh, uh, six of uh, Ganesha's name. And here's what I do. I'm going to take this away now. I just take a deck and I put it in Ganesha's hands like this. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. Now this is going to be totally, totally random. I, I fiddle with the deck, I turn it upside down and everything else, but I chant the mantra. Ganesh, 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 that's 12. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. Now I put that card over there because I've gone through 24 of my rosary things of chanting the sacred name of Ganesh. To the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel, both verses of Pop Goes the Weasel. 
four and a half verses of Pop Goes the Weasels gives me the entire rosary of Ganesha's name. So, and everything is random. Remember that. Everything is random. Now, I've already done one full cycle. So here's, I'll just continue. The second verse. Ganesh, 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 Ganesha, Ganesh, 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 Ganesh,
demonstration here to give all of us, all of us, an oracle about the world situation, the earth situation, existence itself situation. So I'm going to choose the world card or the universe card to be the significator. And the world is going to ask what's happening to me. And I'm going to ask it in such a way that the world is going to give each of us at least the potential of giving us a clue to how the world is answering that question for us. So I will shuffle the cards until I feel the spirit has moved me to stop shuffling. Shuffle a few times this way. I'm using an older deck of my cards because this has gone all around the world for many years. It looks like a biohazard, doesn't it? Okay, the world has told me to stop shuffling. Now, in a way, this entire deck, in order, is a 78-card, very detailed, cosmic answer. But we can't wrap our meat brains around 78. 78 uh, cards. I can't anyway. So, I choose as the significator the world card or the universe card. And then I flip the deck upside down like this. I notice what the card is on the bottom because the deck is now speaking to us. Sometimes it's obvious what uh, the, the card might mean in relationship to our issue or our question. Sometimes it doesn't. It just so happens that we've got the Ace of Wands here and the Ace, or excuse me, the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands represents the Deccan. I don't know if you can see this. It represents the, the uh, Deccan, or the 30 degree, excuse me, the 30 degree period of 20 degrees Pisces to 20 degrees Aries. And it just so happens that this card that represents, or the, the answer, if you will, or the statement about what's going on in the world, it just happens to be the 30 degree period we're in right now, March 11th through April 10th. Does that mean anything? If it does to you, it really means something. Okay, but we want to start the reading, even though this represents the deck, uh, shuffle deck now represents the entire uh, detailed question. We want to start with the world itself to give us a place to, to uh, uh, be informed from the point of view of the universe or the world card or the clearance significator. So place the deck to the far left. I hope you can see this. I, I, I don't know. Uh, to the far left. And then I spread them out like that. And I start at the far right. And I carefully tiptoe through the cards without disturbing the order of the cards until I find the universe card. 
And when I find it, I'm going to cut the deck there so that the first card that we read, there it is. I found it right there. So all the cards that remain to the left of it, I'm picking up. Oh, my. And I'm placing them to that step to the far right, and I reassemble the deck. Now the deck is sequenced just exactly the way it was when I stopped shuffling. Except now, because I've cut it and reassembled, we're starting with the universe card. And we've got a new bottom of the deck, which is the devil. Does that have meaning to our question? I would say most likely it does. Now, because the cards are sequenced exactly the way they were when I stopped shuffling, when the universe told me to stop shuffling, except we're starting with the universe card as the top card in our reading, the bottom card in our reading seems like it's the furthest card away from our significator at the top of the deck. Well, it is moving forward. But because the deck is like a snake with its tail in its mouth, any place we would cut it, it'd still be sequenced the same. So the devil card, this part of our answer, says two things at the same time. Objectively, the meaning and the significance of the devil is far away, distant from our, our significator at the top of the deck. But subjectively, it is the closest card to our universe card. Subjectively. It's like a snake with its tail in its mouth. The devil is hovering invisibly, subjectively, right behind invisible, the universe card. Does that mean anything? Perhaps. But when I flip the deck over now, our significator is right there at the top of the deck. Put it right there. And over the years, here's what I've developed. I just pick the next three cards. I've got the Two of Swords, Peace Restored. The second card is Two of Discs, Harmonious Change. The third card, the Seven of Cups, Illusionary Success. Crowley calls it Debauch. Now, before you start analyzing these cards with everything that you know about uh, tarot and, and such, think about what your first reaction was to these cards. That first reaction is the most accurate of all of the messages that the cards are delivering to you. But I'm going to point out a couple things before I uh, uh, in today's talk. Two of Swords, Peace Restored. Okay, well, let me put the devil right here to remind us what's subjectively behind everything. Two of Swords, starting in September, September 23rd through October 2nd is the card uh, that uh, represents that 10 degree period in the Zodiac, September 
twenty third through october second peace restored then starting in december december twenty second through december thirtieth the beautiful and wonderful card you usually like to see pop up in a reading the two of discs harmonious change then the time period represented by the seven of cups which is the next one which is debauch or the seven of <laughs> seven of swords which as you can see i've got represented as seven martini glasses now because there's quite a number of people here uh, watching this hopefully uh, these cards have a separate meaning for absolutely every one of us so i'm not going to venture too far into uh, uh, interpreting these cards for you uh, Constance is in the kitchen. Got any ideas, dear? Oh, no, I just walked in from hanging the clothes out, so I haven't heard much. Okay. She's been hanging the clothes out. Okay. Message for the world in this time. Peace restored in September. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, harmonious change, perhaps in December. And illusionary success, perhaps in November. But don't let my dates and uh, my speculation influence you. Anyway, that's our oracle. Now, perhaps in a normal reading with uh, with somebody, they, uh, they, uh, the first two cards, let's say, make perfect sense to them in, in uh, uh, relationship to their particular question. But they don't know what the heck that's about, that debauch thing. They, that, they understand this one, they understand that one but they don't know this debauch thing. If there is still that, that terribly weighty question on, on the querent's mind, uh, then I will sometimes draw the next two cards to comment on, uh, on that. Well, I don't understand that illusionary success thing. Uh, am I going to have some martinis there in, uh, around Thanksgiving time or in November? Or, uh, I don't get it. Well, perhaps the Hierophant or uh, appeal to, uh, to a higher power uh, or a higher authority or even help from uh, uh, unexpected quarters might give you some idea of uh, 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 of where that's going to uh, come from or what it might be referring to. Now, the Princess of Wands uh, is actually giving us a Yi Ching hexagram too. Uh, and when you really are in doubt about what the, what the tarot meaning of the cards are, if it's one of the 16 court cards, you've also got a Yi Ching hexagram uh, to uh, uh, perhaps inform you. And it's the hexagram of the corners of the mouth or providing nourishment. So the idea that, that, uh, that we're seeing here in the Seven of Cups uh, with illusionary success or debauch uh, might, uh, might indicate that the problems uh, arising uh, from this is one of overindulgence of some kind. Because the corners of the mouth hexagram is the one that says, be careful of what comes out of your mouth. 
it looks like a mouth, doesn't it? Even the, even the hexagram. Be careful what comes out of your mouth can get you in trouble. This might even be a religious leader of some kind getting you <laughs> whatever. Uh, be careful what comes out of your mouth and what goes into your mouth to nourish you. So, but that's just an example. Uh, anyway, that's our little tarot. Let's see here. I'm going to take this. Oh, that's our little tarot demonstration for today. It's Saturday. Let's get on with life. Let's have some fun. Uh, let's do what we can to bring us a little peace leading to harmonious change. And let's not make ourselves sick. Let's be guided by our, our own higher power. Be careful. Be careful about shooting our mouth off and feeding ourselves with unhealthy things and ideas. How about that? Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.